This is our 154 um, Animation 2 lecture. Um, I opened up the demo file that you can uh, download from Angel. And the first thing we'll look at is we're just going to do some basic um, materials, and then we'll look at some stuff that's uh, a little bit more relevant. Um, so let's see. Let's go to Material Editor. I'm back Material Editor. And I'll hit X just to maximize. So I need a couple. So the first material we're going to make today is the beach ball. And I will assign that to the sphere. And then I'm going to add a map to the diffuse channel, and that's the color channel. And I'm going to use a procedural instead of a picture bitmap. So we're going to use what's called the gradient ramp. Hit OK. And the instant that that works, remember you have to toggle this to show it in the viewport. Now you can see that basically we have this ramp wrapped around the object one time. Now this isn't going to necessarily give us what we want, so we have to change some settings. The interpolation is linear right now. We want to change it to solid. And now what we do is we have two colors. So we go change it to solid, and then we right-click over the little tab and do Edit Properties. And I will change this one to a red. There we go. And I will change this one. You can just click it now that it's up. And change that one to white. And hit OK. So now we have a stripe. So now we need to do some more work on this. So the other work we need to do is the tiling, which is how many times the texture is repeated. And if we start to move this, you can see how it increases and decreases. I usually do five. And now you can see it starts to look like a ball, and we have that basic setup. And now when it rotates, you can actually see it. The problem with any rotation is there's no point in doing it um, previously because we're not going to see it. So that's the beach ball. So let's do the basketball next. Basketball. Do the same thing. We'll assign this to the sphere. We're going to add a map again. And we're going to do a bitmap. And let's go find it. We've got to go. Just give me a sec. Let's go get it. And there we go. And I want basketball color. Hit open. Remember to hit the little icon to preview it, and you can see there's definitely something wrong with this. Um, what it's doing is it's taking this 2D texture, which we have here, and it's wrapping it around spherically. So it's taking it almost like shrink wrap and wrapping it around. Um, so this isn't going to work. And we can try different things like doubling the tiling to see if that helps. And obviously that doesn't work. So there's something going on here that we need to fix. So this actually has nothing to do with the material. This is actually has to do with the way that the material is applied to the surface, which has to do with the UV coordinates, which are the coordinates of how the texture is assigned. And in order to fix this, all we're going to do is change it from a spherical mapping, which we have right now, and choose the UVW map modifier. And the instant we do that, it fixes because it does what's called a planar projection. It takes the image and imagine the slide projector. It shoots it through the object. And if you move around, you can see that now we have something that looks much more realistic. Before, we had it set to spherical. So you can see that. Um, and actually, you can kind of roughly, you might be able to see it. Um, there's cylindrical mapping. There's box mapping, there's face mapping, which we'll get into in a moment, and planar. So the default planar works. If for some reason your material is off, you can change the orientation that it maps to, um, but you should be fine. But if for some reason your material is slightly different, that's okay. So um, last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the golf ball. Now the golf ball, we're not going to use the, um, we have to modify it right now. Uh, if we look at this shape, this shape isn't going to work for a golf ball because golf ball is actually what's called a geodesic dome. There's equal space between all the vertices, and this default sphere doesn't have it. So we need to create a new shape, and it's right below the normal sphere, and it's called a geosphere. And you'll see that it looks different, and you can see it's made out of a bunch of triangles. And let's do a... Um, Let's do a some extends all of that object and then hide unselected just to make life easier. Okay, there we go. So now we can see the shape. So this is a little different 
And the thing is, is you could actually do a Boolean operation, which is when you add and subtract. You could actually take little spheres and cut them away from the shape, and you'd end up with something that'd be like insane, like 125. Thousand to half a million polygons. Um, that's really not necessary for a really small thing that we're doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign. It's kind of a hack. That's what I call it, but um, it'll look pretty good uh, once you animate it. Remember, these things are going to be moving, and you're going to look at them from pretty far away. So this is a golf ball texture, and we will assign that to the geosphere. And now we're not doing anything with diffuse because remember golf ball is a solid material that's white. And then we can also give it a little bit of specularity because it's shiny. And we'll go in and now we're going to start to work with the maps. So if we go to the bump map, that's the one, the one that we want because that's going to create the holes. Go into none. We're going to load up a bitmap. And hopefully it goes back to the folder we just at. And we want to load up golf ball bump. Um, and if I render this real quick, okay, we're doing an animation. Let's stop that real quick. Um, rendering, render setup, single, and we don't need to save it to my desktop. And let's render that again. There we go. You can see there's a little bit of an indentation. So if I increase the bump amount to, let's say, 200, it's going to be a little bit more dramatic rendered out and now you can start to see it but um, that looks absolutely nothing like a golf ball. So what we need to do is we need to change the UV coordinates. So um, what we want to do is pull up that map and make it so we preview it. Now remember this is the preview but when it actually renders the darker something is the further back it goes and the white the higher it goes because this is a bump map. Um, but we need to change the UV mapping so we're going to add a UVW sphere or UVW map and you can see it did planar, that's not going to work. Cylindrical is not going to work. Spherical is not going to work. Face is what we want. And what it did is it assigned the texture to face. However, you'll notice that the things aren't kind of even. They're slightly two different ones. And that's because the way that it thinks of face is rather than doing uh, a single triangle, it's actually a combination of two triangles. So now we have to change the position of how this is. Um, and in order to do that, we have to add another special UV dub, um UV modifier called unwrap and this enables you to edit and you can tell you're in it because it turns green. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with this and this is how they do characters but what we want to do is do open UV editor and the first thing you'll do is pull up texture so you have a reference texture and if I go and I grab this and change the move tool so I can move it um, now you didn't see any update because this is basically has every single triangle. You can see all the vertices here. So what you want to do is you want to border select, pull down the left mouse button and drag in order to get an area. And you can see as I'm doing this real time, it's updating for half of it. So that's why this shape has two circles. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down here. And then I'm going to move this up here because I got to rotate it. If I don't rotate it, um, it's going to look funny. Bring this one here, and now you can see, aha, now we're starting to get the triangle. Bring this one and move it up and get it in. And when you render this, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to look a lot better than um, it did. So that's all we need to do with that. We'll render it out, and now you can see we start to get a bumbly, speckly, and it's not perfect, but when you render it from distance and the object's moving, it'll create the illusion and it'll look accurate. Um, so there's some stuff you can kind of do to get that. Um, now the problem is, what do you do with this if you already have keyframes? So uh, the easiest thing to do is if we go into the graph editor, and we need to go grab the sphere. So let's see if the sphere is here. No, nope. let's select it. So unhide all. Oh, sorry. Computer's being a little grumpy. Um, unhide all, there we go, and we're still in selection mode, let's get out of that, I clicked on to get it, okay, so now we're back in the sphere, and what we want to do with the, the sphere is if we go into the curve editor, you'll see here's the keys, so all we need to do is hold down left mouse button and border select all of those, 
Now the other thing you can also do is you can also just um, right click over where it says position or you can right click over transform which will copy the rotation the scale and the position. So right now we just have a position that we're dealing with. So right click copy and now we go and we select the golf ball and we go back and right click position and go paste and an instance so they're linked you probably just want to copy so it's separate so you can animate and there you go and now that object you can see both the objects coincide and move together so that's pretty uh, easy and straightforward hopefully to get that going now the other thing that I want to talk about and I'm just going to talk about this uh, briefly um, in the assignment sheet there's some information about the, what's called the 12 principles of animation um, it refers to basically what the Disney animators uh, started doing um, and before we do that, I wanted to uh, do a quick thing about the basketball. Um, one thing I neglected to do real quick is um, I forgot to add a bump map to this. So if we go back to the basketball, um, and then we go open up maps, and we go down, there's a bump map, and I'll change this to 100 so we can see it. And if we go back to the bitmap and open it up, there's our bump map. And if we open that, uh, basically, if you look at it, you'll see it's the same. Uh, and if we go to render it out, uh, let's get close up. And go to render this out. Um, now we start to get some texture that's actually showing up on the surface. Now, if for some reason you want to change it right now, whatever is black is going back, whatever is white is coming forward, to increase the realism of this, we can also copy this by left mouse button and dragging it up to the specular level. And we'll just do a copy so we can change it. And now you see the high parts are shiny, the low part isn't. If for some reason you wanted to do it the opposite of that, you can select that material or that um, the bump, the bitmap. All right, that's the diffuse color. Let's go back. Basketball, specular level, that's what we want to do. Okay, specular level, there we go. The wrong one. And go down to output and open it up and choose invert and in the instant of that now you see the low parts because it inverted so the white is now the shiniest and the black is the least shiny now if you run it out you can see you can get a sheen and you can do a lot to to adjust with it but just to kind of give you the basics of that so let's go back and let's get our let's just go back to the beach ball check there we go oh, oh we changed the map one so that's not going to help. Okay. And we'll do that. Fuse and pull that. There we go. Okay, so I have a basic animation set up at this point. And if you watch it, the first thing you'll notice is that it's not rotating. So I, actually, I add um, multiple rotations. Um, accurately, what happens if you think about like a frog jumping, um, the basketball technically should point in the direction that it's going. If, let's say this is a face right here, um, this point. That point, when it bounces, will look forward, and then it'll look down, and it'll look forward and up and down. Um, so basically, your rotation is changing while it's bouncing. But for the most part, people will buy into um, just any type of rotation. Um, you want to make sure that rotation starts. And then uh, usually what will happen is after the ball stops, it will rotate a little. And what I do is I rotate it straight. And then right before um, it's done, I move it slightly, rotate it slightly to the right or the left. And that implies that it, quote unquote, dies or stops moving, um, just to visually tell people uh, what's happening. So we can go and if we set up, uh, go back to good old auto key. And what we want to do is, OK, so we want to do a rotation. Uh, so let's go to the end of this. Okay, so you see that's moving. So we're going to go right here, and we're going to oh, wrong one. We're going to do this simply. I mean, that's not a lot at all. That was uh, like 270. So now, if we go, you'll see it's slowly bouncing, but it's enough movement that people buy into it, and it's it's credible. And you're basically going between the two. Now, if I turn off Auto Key and go back, you'll see now there's a green tick right there and there's a green tick right there and that's because um, it's added a rotation channel. Now at this point we have it coming here in 85. Let me increase the total length of this to 100. And now we'll go forward and it's rotating so we'll have it and you know what let's uh, take this 
Um, okay, so it's rotating. And at this point, let's take this rotation and uh, actually see if we can adjust it. Oh, wait, it's not going to work. I don't. Um, so what we want to do is at this point, we want to add another rotation. So I'm just going to continue this rotation just a little bit. So now I have it rotating up. I don't have auto key on. Not thinking, okay, auto key on. Just a little bit. So now we got it going forward, a little bit of a rotation. And then from here is where we want to rotate it off to the side from this point. And then maybe have it kind of come over. Now, right now, this is doing a relative to view. Um, I was going to do it to the world the coordinate structure so that I can actually bring this over here and over there so it kind of stops and then we'll do a little bit more rotation while we go slightly forward so you can see we go bounce, bounce, rotate, rotate, stop do a little bit of a spin, rotate off to the side and actually you can see that I gotta do the move I have to get rid of the move coordinate right there because um, it's acting a little funny. Yeah, I need to get the, rid of this one right here. Um, okay, delete. Okay, let's see how this works now. Okay, bounce, bounce. Okay, and then it goes off to the side. So that's kind of the idea of what you want to do. Um, now, like I said, you can get more accurate, but that's enough that it's going to help to read, and then people will buy into the fact that it's actually moving, and it helps you with the slowdown. Now, the other thing that people talk about sometimes, and I don't generally do because um, for the objects, um, the beach ball, potentially you can do it, is a thing called squash and stretch. The idea behind squash and stretch, uh, let me just uh, get rid of, just clean up these keys real quick. And actually, you know what, let's just do a single at this point, yeah, because there's, um, we're going to do a motion blur, but I can show that separately. So now we have this single bounce, and where is this stopping? I can click it real quick and find out that that's at frame 30. So let's decrease this, so we're only playing to frame 30. Hit OK. And now if I play this, we basically have the ball bouncing up and down. Um, and we'll hide this. Right, selection. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is bouncing up and down. And let's go, and actually, you know, I could probably do this from the front, but we'll just leave it here. Okay, so it's going up and down. And what should be happening at this point is when it's up, let's turn on auto key so we can start to do stuff. We want to do scale, and I'm going to do this relative to the local, which is the actual object. So at this point, we're okay. Um, but what we want to do is we want to animate it, and at the top, it's going to be completely normal. And then at the bottom, it's going to get squished. So we want to select the sphere, and we want to actually, let's do this world. We want to take this and squish it. Now the other thing you have to be aware of is you have to maintain the mass. So it's actually going to get slightly wider and lower. So now we have a key here. And now you can see it looks a little funny up here. Now at this point, what it's going to do is it's going to go to, um, let's just right click and see if we can just zero this out. Yeah, absolute. So let's go 100, 100, 100. So now I've returned it to its original shape. And now if you watch, you'll see it comes down. And as it comes down, it actually changes the shape and it smashes. And if you add the rotation, now you can start to do that, and you see it squish. Now, if you have a fake object, this becomes really object um, becomes really obvious. Um, so that's something just to be aware of. And actually, we could take uh, this key right here and hold down uh, Shift, and then we'll copy it, and we'll don't get over that one. Now, if we play, we should have a cleaner. So you can see now it's basically going smush and it's getting bigger. Um, technically, when it goes up, it's down. This next one is instantly, it should spring back into the shape. So we're actually going flat. Boom, it's going up, it's going up some, and then it's kind of form and come down. So technically, it's a little extreme the way that we have it. So we can kind of minimize some of that um, squashing and stretching a little bit so that it's not extreme. Um, goes up. 
and then goes back down. But like I said, you can play with it, and I would only put on the beach ball, and, and for the most part, you don't have to do it at all. Now, the final thing we're going to do is let's just uh, render this out, render setup. Um, and we'll just do this as an AVI, and we'll render out the active time segment. And we're going to increase this to 640 by 480 so you can see some stuff that I want to have you look at. And files, make sure we'll do this um, uh, rendering with, without uh, blur. So let's save. Okay, and um, let's render this out. Okay, very strange looking squash and stretch. So, let's open this up in. I'm going to open up in QuickTime. Just because it's. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it should be easier to scrub. There we go. Okay, so we got a couple things are off. The first thing that's off is this is actually a uh, wrong type of compression. Um, you can see all the um, anti aliasing. Actually, this is called interlacing. And that's because the default is um, saving it as a digital video format somehow. You can see how it's looking a little funny. So the compression's a little buggy. Um, the other thing that's happening is it's just not anti-aliasing it. But when the ball's moving, if you look at the frames, there's no blur. In the real world, the ball would actually blur. So what we want to take a look at is actually how can we introduce that blur. Um, and the way you have to do that is you have to add what's called motion blur. And in order to do that, you need a camera. So actually, let me go in and just double check the settings on this. So ABM setup, JPEG compressor. Yep, that's right. And maximum hit OK. And then we'll call this with blur. So save. And um, I think I know if you're able to do QuickTime, I'd recommend doing that over the AVI and using the H264. Um, Okay, so let's add the worm perspective, create, create camera from view, and we can pull up the safe frame, all those types of things. But what we really want to look at is go in, and with the camera, there's an option called multi pass effect. And if we do enable depth of field, um, we want to do motion blur. And then we're going to have a couple options, and let's just uh, run this out real quick and, and see what we get. So you can see what it's doing is it's actually rendering and it's creating a blurred image while it's doing it. So you can see this looks pretty different. Now I'm just going to cancel this out. And the thing that's happening right now just to kind of explain is it's rendering 12 times for every single frame. And it's rendering between basically a whole frame as far as distance, which is actually a little extreme. What you're going to do is get long blurs. And this is kind of where it's going to do it, whether or not it's going to... Um, ease in or ease out as far as um, items. Um, I find a lot of times you can just get this down to three and rather than doing a whole um, let's do 0.3 or 0.25 so we're basically saying we're taking a 0.3 uh, of frame uh, instance and only doing those fewer passes and now when we go to render this out you can see it's going a lot quicker. We're getting a blur. It's not as noticeable but um, when we go to animate it and, and actually watch the rendering which should be fun. So let it finish out its bounce. And you can see it takes a little longer, um, but that's just because you're rendering three times as much. Okay, okay at this, uh, open this up, uh, quick time again. And yeah, we're still getting that weird. Interlacing issue. I must have some setting that's off. But if you look, you can see we're getting our blur here and there. So that's um, view. Let's do half size. And yeah, you can see it a little bit, especially right there where it's kind of blurring. And the faster it goes, the more blur you're going to get. But um, it it'll add a realism, and you can tell sometimes once you get used to computer animations whether or not someone is is using it or not. Um, 